I have a dream that one day dialysis will set me free. Um, I'm Asif's manager. Um, he banks with us. Um, there will be a few difficulties probably of employing him full time as we've already discussed. Yeah, we have. Um, because of um, sickness and health issues. Um, and hospital policies. Um, so Asif stays on the bank and he banks with us permanently. Um, I have to say, Asif has an amazing work ethic. Um, he's very reliable. Um, he has great sense of humour. And I don't think anyone looking on the outside would realise just how sick he is. Um, he is a great team player, but also uses an initiative. He um, keeps us all organised <laughs> and has us running around um, and the team absolutely love him. So if you look at Asif on the outside, um, yes he's a little bit small but apart from that you would naturally realise that he is ill unless you really know him. Um, so when our patients come in they wouldn't realise he was sick because he's on reception for us. Um, but we, as we've got to know him, we'll realise signs he'll get tired easily. Um, he's only supposed to drink a certain amount of fluid. He's not always very good at that, but don't tell anybody. <laughs> um, and yesterday I phoned him and I could just tell by his voice he wasn't having a great day. Um, and you'll ask him if he's okay and normally it's like, yeah, I'm fine or yeah, I've got a bit of cramp today. Um, and he just carries on. I've never known him go home early. He sometimes comes in late if he's got cramps in the morning or he's been up late with his dialysis, which he has to have every night. Um, but with his role, we're allow we, we can allow for flexibility, which is a good part of this role for him, really. I feel really proud of Asif. Um, like I've already said, his work ethic is amazing. You get people that come in and they'll complain they've got a cold or a headache. Um, this young man doesn't complain about anything except if you don't get something right in the work environment and then he's a real pain in the neck to get it sorted um, and that's a good thing about him being on a bank contract because he can be flexible and we can be flexible with him um, he always gives me plenty of notice um, he'll always message me if he's not feeling great and he won't always take the whole day off you know you can get people phoning sick and they'll take the whole day off um, but Asif will just say, can I come in a bit later? But then he'll also ask me, as he did the other day, could I stay later today, please? Because my dialysis time's been moved. So you don't get many employees that ask you if they can stay a bit later. And I'm, I'm very lucky to have you as my manager. Well, it was kind of a bit of a fluke, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Very lucky. Because he used to come in to work and sit in the canteen um, because he only had an afternoon job. And someone said to me, and I just said, would you like to come and work mornings as well? Um, so that's how it started really. Yeah, and then from mornings it went to afternoons and then from afternoons yeah. it went to... So Asif works full time. Full time, yeah. And we do try and check and say is it too much for you or yeah. is... But, but no, he's happy great. and he's, he cool. loves moving here to the Coleman Centre. Love he loves his reception. He loves looking after it. New place, amazing team and amazing manager. Okay. So my recommendations would be um, if someone comes to you and they do have an underlying illness, um, don't let that put you off. Because like I've already said, if you've got someone like Asif with a huge work ethic um, and so many ailments, it's not just going for dialysis, there's lots more things going on with Asif. Um, like I said, no one would ever know, but I get the best out of him. And that's, um, that's so beneficial and so rewarding. In our, within our Asian communities, it's not very talked about topic um, with many other topics. And um, I thought I'd share my story in order to um, inspire and maybe motivate and help aware, make this awareness within the Asian community and not just Asian community, within throughout anyone, who anyone who's suffering out there. Um, my life's been um, a roller coaster with many ups many downs. Um, I've had altogether 14 up to 15 operations throughout my life 
and many more to come. This life story of mine will show you in depth of um, what, what it is to be a renal patient and how, how much these things you've got to sacrifice. Like for myself, i got to sacrifice not only relationships, which hurts for myself, because a lot of people I see getting married, getting relationships, yeah? But for myself, I can't do that. And many people say, why can't you? Yeah, it's, it's just within our Asian community, you can't get... It, it, there's a big taboo about illnesses and marriages and relationships, yeah? And also, um, it, it, it's just... It's like when I go for interviews, yeah? Everyone's like, obviously they won't say in front of you, but it, it, it hurts. And when you go shopping, people stare at you, yeah? And when I go shopping, people call me a kid, thinking I'm a kid. And that, that kind of, it hurts. It really does hurt sometimes. But then you've got to look at the ops, yeah? There are many people worse off out there. And that's, that's the only way I can get through this life, yeah? It's like the other day, yeah, I went into town, yeah? I just went into town, I went shopping, I thought, okay, let me go shopping, buy some clothes. I went in, I put my, I went to pay, took my card out, and the cashier thought I stole my parents' credit cards. Now, that's the things that hurt me. And um, you see the thing, people don't see how renal, renal, the renal life affects one person. It affects not only on dialysis, such as pain and headaches and dizziness and vomiting. There's the social part of it. There's um, there's a work part of it. There's a family part of it. There's a huge part of it. And it's affected me, not, not only myself, but my friends and my family. Say, for example, my friends go out yeah, every, like every weekend. They ask me, I said, do you want to come out? I can't go out. I got dialysis, yeah? Now my friend's going on holiday. They ask if you want to go and come on holiday. No, I can't go on holiday. I got dialysis, yeah? Now my, fam now my family and my family friends are saying, oh, I said, um, when are you going to get a girlfriend or when are you going to get married or whatnot, yeah? I can't do that. I got too much commitment to dialysis. So people say, Look, you, you, people say, oh, you're on your diet for three days a week. Yeah, you can juggle it around there. But it's not. There's some, many cases are different. Many people on two days dialysis, many people on three day dialysis. But I'm the only one you will ever see that is on six days dialysis. Yeah, every single day I finish work, I start work at seven, I, I start work at seven, and I finish work at four. And you know what? The only thing that is getting me through work is the hard work and determination that I put in. And that's that. I'm not bigging myself up or anything, but I, there's so much motivation and inspiration on people around me. And um, some people even said to me, I said, why well, didn't go benefits, yeah? Why well, didn't you relax at home, chill on benefits, yeah? You'll be much better off. No, that ain't me. Why is it me? Why is it me who's always staying here? And I've been, why is it me that's always here? And, I, and everyone's having transplants. Everyone's either having a future or gone off. Or everyone's either married off and got what businesses or whatnot. Why is it me? And then I thought to myself, I just took a few weeks to myself. And I was like, no, I can't do this. I need to step up my game. I need to not just feel sorry for myself and sit there, yeah? I need to... Sh there must be more people feeling like myself than just myself. So then I was like, no, I've, I've got to do this. So then I got back up with the help of my nurses and my amazing managers and my amazing colleagues, yeah? They, they have been with me through and thick and thin. Yeah, especially my friends. And um, I swear, without them, I wouldn't be here today. I'm telling you now, yeah. My, my nurses, I, I, I take my hats off to you. You don't get much credit, yeah. But I tell you what, you, you are my angels. You are my, you are my saviors. And you really, you really helped me through the tip and thin. 
amazing friends such as uh, Naeem Briska and everyone, I swear, without them, it, 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 it's only people like them that drive, drive me to do what I do. People like Ifas, people like Naeem, they, they don't, they don't, they're the people that drive me to do what I do. I'm telling you now, yeah, don't give up, yeah. Yeah, there's always a way out. Don't ever give up, as I've lost too many friends to dialysis. I've lost too, too many friends, and um, I, can't, I can't lose any more friends. Yeah, I've lost um, a good friend of mine, which I've known for about, I would say, five years. And he was like a granddad to me, a granddad on dialysis, I call him. Yeah, and he used to come in every day, even though he couldn't breathe, he was on oxygen, he used to come in and he used to say, I said, how are you? He used to ask the nurses to ask, sit next to me. I want to sit next to him, yeah? And he was about 80 odd, I would say, yeah? And he would talk about his life and his, his war medals and literally it would amaze me. And I swear, I tell you what, he's my inspirational, he's my role model and it's because of him I am going for him, yeah? He, he, he was, he was, I swear, he was one of a kind. And um, I tell you what, because of him, even though I got cramps right now, I'm getting cramps, yeah, in my legs, it's killing me. But because of, I'm thinking of him, I'm thinking of people that are worse off, it's keeping me going, it, it just hurts. Because my friends are having kids, I can't have kids. My friends are getting married, I can't get married. And it's hard because when people are looking down on you, just because of your condition. And it just hurts, isn't it? As if you're okay with Yeah, yeah. Listen, let's carry, let's, let's, let's cut for a minute, yeah? Let's have a break, but okay. Do you want to carry on or should we leave it? No, I, I, I should yeah, be okay. Let's, okay. let's, cut, let's cut, cut it, let's cut it, cut it. Someone's cutting my table already. I'm gonna go on the ISIS. So I'm just getting everything ready to show you guys um, what I go through on a day to day basis. I'm gonna clean my hands and then I'm gonna set up my table. Set up my tables. And then I'm gonna check my machine, put my machine into prime. Like this is the ISIS machine. So um, this here is a kidney. This cleans our blood. So the blood goes from the kidney. It's called a kidney. Yeah? Because of a fish, it cleans our blood like a kidney does. The blood goes in from the top, comes in, washed inside, comes out from here, then go, circles through, takes all the fluid out, then goes back in. So that happens throughout the four hours. Circulate, circulate, circulate. Okay, so I'm Angela and I'm one of Alice, Asif's dialysis nurses. We've come quite a long way together, haven't we, Asif? Yeah. And how long have you been coming here? Uh, so far, about nine years. Nine years to Leicester? Yeah. Crikey, that has flown by because it doesn't feel that long to me. I know. But you've come a long way and you've come to us from Nottingham, haven't yeah. you? Yeah. So Asif gets on with his dialysis six times a week and uh, comes onto the unit, usually after work and we try and accommodate him as early as possible and we've taught him quite a few bits on his machine and how to put his needles on himself. So we'll get started on that, shall we, Asif? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So when he comes here, the main purpose is to um, clean the blood because his kidneys don't work and also to remove the extra fluid that his kidneys would normally um, get rid of. So he has a strict procedure here and he's, uh, we, su we supervise him and we monitor it. And if we don't think it's quite right, we have a little chat about it, don't we, Asif? Yeah. <laughs> but most <laughs> of the time it's all spot on, it's spot on. So before you started filming, everything was clean, just in case anybody's watching that has seen this sort of thing before. So Asif cleans his arm, he washes his hands, and he sets all his table up. Uh, so, People who have dialysis have to have needles put in for dialysis. And for Asif, he puts his own needles in, but he uses a technique called the buttonhole technique, which means that he goes in through the same hole every time. And you can see at the moment, he's just picking off a scab. Sounds a bit horrible, but actually, it's a great technique when done properly 
to help preserve the life of the fistula and that's this vessel that's being created here. So it's all about cleaning and making sure we're not pushing any dirty bugs in and making sure that the hole doesn't get too large. So the idea of the shared care is that we share it, he does what he wants and I teach him or one of us teach them straight on top. Yeah. yeah. And we, we do it together. So we take the blood out of one needle and then it goes around the machine and then it goes back in the other needle. So we take it out of the bottom needle and it goes back into the top needle. And we just make sure that we don't touch the ends of anything to keep it all nice and clean so it doesn't get any bugs. And then we start the blood pump and you can probably see the blood comes out of one tube and then it'll go back in on the other one. I'll do that in a minute, Attic. I'll take you up in a minute. So on the machine, we've got what the artificial kidney, which is over here. And in a moment, you'll see the blood going in. It goes in at the bottom and it goes through the filter, which is like a pile of tiny straws. And the blood goes through those and then comes out the top. And through these big chunky pipes, we've got fluid which is called dialysate fluid and that's a mixture of water that comes through a special treatment plant with a mixture of bicarbonate and an acetate solution as well, acid. And the chemical processes of convection and diffusion remove the fluid and the toxins yeah. because you don't dialyze on a Sunday yeah you're not too bad though to be fair I'm not, I'm not too bad it's not fluid it's just it, 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 it's just because I dialyze every day because I have you that get, day off you get used to it don't you you get used to it and then when you have that day off you're like whoa yeah feel heavy yeah because yeah. you used to end up in hospital reasonably oh, regularly. regularly not through your own fault but infections and fluid build up and just feeling poorly yeah. so then when your consultant said dialyze every day we start off five times a week oh didn't my it God. since i've dialyzed well since i've started dialyzing every single day my my heart failure or well, my doctor said my heart failure has come from severely impaired to excellent yeah so that's a huge improvement in my, yeah. in my um, heart, heart side of it. Yeah, which, which plays a big part in the rest of your life, yeah. to be fair, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, it does. And I can work with time. Yeah. So from our perspective, when Asif used to come here to start with, he used to come in and be, you know, how old were you? You were still at college, weren't oh, then you? I was about 17, 18. 18, and he was at college. He'd come straight after school, um, after college, and he'd come here and he'd be tired, and then he'd go home. and he. It wasn't the greatest of fun. No. <laughs> <laughs> I used to go on oxygen every time. Yeah, but now he's taking control of it. It comes more often. It stays well. He looks after it. But what he really does for the unit, and I can't emphasise it enough to you, is the spirit he puts in the unit. So for new people, if they're willing to listen to him, he'll talk to them. And if they're willing to, to learn, he'll encourage them. You've the worst bit I think for you is that some people come and go, some people get transplanted, older people might die, and Asif is the one still here. But on the positive side, you know, five years ago, your outfit look, didn't look great, yeah. did it? And, you know, five years on, yeah. you've been to some conferences yeah. with us, you've been on learning events with us. He's, he's one of our team players now. This is my life. And this is part of, this is my marriage. I'm always going to take this everywhere I go. No matter where I go, dialysis will always be part of me. Yeah. Whether I'm here, whether I'm abroad, whether I'm anywhere at work, dialysis is always going to be part of me. And I'm proud to say it. Yeah. And I'm proud to be a renal patient.